Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. This is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture by reciting the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari karti bari bharti sanjari harti leelaya We are studying the Tatpurusha Samasa in this course. Tatpurusha Samasa is one of the most important Samasas in Sanskrit. It is the most productive amongst the major four types. Avyayibhava, Tatpurusha, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva. Tatpurusha Samasa also has many varieties in comparison with the other types of Samasas. Even in Panini's grammar, a number of sutras have been composed by Panini in order to explain the Tatpurusha Samasa and <clears throat> there are quite a few in comparison with the sutras explaining the other types of Samasas be it Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra or be it Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutra or be it Samasa Swara Vidhayaka Sutra, Panini has composed number of sutras explaining the Tatpurusha Samasa in comparison with the other three Samasas. The derivation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be shown in the form of a simple equation in the following manner, where we have X and Y, two different and independent entities in terms of their meaning as well as the word form as well as the accent but they are interrelated and so the speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge them together and generate an output in the form of one unit one unit of meaning one unit of word form and one unit of accent this is what is also described as Ekarthi Bhava. There are three features of this, namely Aikarthya or Ekarthata, Aikapadya or Ekapadata and Aikaswarya Ekaswarata. In the Tatpurusha Samasa, the newly generated output in the form of XY has Y as the head, the second member of the compound or the Uttarapada of the compound plays the role of the head in the compound. What it implies is that when the generated output in the form of a compound becomes part of a sentence, obviously there are possibilities that this compounded word gets interrelated with some other words in the sentence. So this interrelation of other words with this compound will be through this head, Y. And it will never be through X without going through Y. There are instances where Y is interrelated with the external words in the sentence such compounds are treated as exceptions and also termed as 
द असमर्थ समासज इन द पाणिनियन ग्रॅमॅटिकल ट्रॅडिशन वी ऑल्सो स्टडीड टू मेजर सब टाईप्स ऑफ द तत्पुरुष समास नेमली द विभक्ती तत्पुरुष अँड द कर्मधारय तत्पुरुष देन वी ऑल्सो स्टडीड एकदेशी समास अँड देन वी ऑल्सो स्टडीड द नय तत्पुरुष समास अँड वी नोटेड डाऊन सटन फीचर्स ऑफ नय तत्पुरुष समास ॲज वेल नाव वी विल स्टडी प्रादी समास अँड गती समास both stated by one sutra namely 2218 and the sutra is kugati pradayah kugati pradayah 2218 there is only one word in the sutra kugati pradayah and this is prathama bahuvachana and this kugati pradi is a compound word consisting of the following constituents the word ku then words termed as gati and we shall see what gati is in some detail later on in this course and also pradis so the words which are grouped as pradis that means the words which are grouped in such a way that the initial member is pra the words continued are sup as well as sah supa and samartha padavidhi most importantly the other word that continues in this sutra is nityam from the previous sutra 2217 nityam krida jivika yoho so the overall meaning of the sutra is the following any subanta whose pratipadikas are ku and the words termed gati and the words grouped as pradis is always that is the meaning of nityam always compounded with any other interrelated subanta i repeat any subanta whose pratipadikas are ku or the words termed gati and the words grouped as pradis is always compounded with any other interrelated subanta so if we have the meaning to be expressed as the despised person then we have kutsitah purushah to express this kutsitah purushah and kutsitah and purushah they both are semantically related because kutsitah is the qualifier of purusha but the most important part over here is that kutsita even though is part of the laukika vigraha is not part of the alaukika vigraha so kutsita is represented by the word ku so ku stands for kutsita so this will be aspapada vigraha kind of tatpurusha so now we have ku plus su plus purusha plus su as the alaukika vigraha and now by the sutra kugati pradayah we will have the samasa so there will be a samasa saudnya taking place after which the pratipadika saudnya will take place after which supodhatu pratipadika yoga will apply and will delete both the supratyas and so we will have ku plus 0 plus purusha plus 0 finally when we join the two words together we get ku purusha as the final compound output now this means the same as kutsitah purushah but the constituents of the compound are not the same as kutsita and purusha so this is a nitya samasa this was the example of ku getting compounded now let us study which words are termed pradis and how they get compounded so 
there is a sutra pradaya 1458 which gives an enumerative definition of pradis there are 22 words listed there in and they are presented over here pra para ap sam anu av nis nir dus dur vi ang ni adhi api ati su ut abhi prati pari and up these are the 22 words at the beginning of which comes the word pra and so these 22 words are labeled as pradis now the same list is also termed upasarga when these 22 words are connected semantically to an action denoted by a verbal root by the sutra upasarga kriya yoge 1459 and the same list is also termed as gati by the sutra gatischa 1460 in the same semantic condition namely the interrelation with an action denoted by a verbal root now when pradis are referred to independently independent of the gatis they refer to the word pradis when they are separate and they are not termed as gati so for example if you have the meaning to be expressed namely bad man where dur is used in the sense of ninda and bad man indicates the ninda of a particular person so now you have dushta purushaha as the laukika vigraha and in order that this be compounded you will have the alaukika vigraha now but before that dushta and purushaha they are co-referential they both refer to one and the same entity and these are pradis the most important point is that the laukika vigraha has got the word dushta and the samasa the final compound output does not have the word dushta it just has the constituent dur so dur is representing dushta in a way and that is why this compound is different however the ref semantic correlation is that of the co-referentiality so now you have dur plus su plus purusha plus su this is the alaukika vigraha because of which then the samasa saudnya is assigned then the pratipadika saudnya gets assigned because of which then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and then this sutra deletes both the supratyayas and so you have dur plus purusha dur plus zero plus purusha plus zero and then finally you have dur purusha then this ra becomes visarga and then finally this visarga is substituted by sh by the respective sandhi rules vidudupadasya cha pratyayasya and so you get the finally derived compound form dushpurusha now this is a nitya samasa of a swapada vigraha kind because the laukika vigraha has got the word dushta and the compound finally derived output is having the purvapada dur similarly when su and ati are used in the sense of respect and when you want to express the meaning a noble man and the laukika vigraha would be sushtu purushaha now here once again the laukika vigraha consists of two words sushtu and purusha and then there is co-referentiality as semantic relatedness so compound is possible and so now you have an alaukika vigraha of this kind su or ati plus su plus purusha plus su 
Now this becomes samasa and then it is termed as pratipadika and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and both the suprateyas are deleted. So su or ati plus zero plus purusha plus zero. And now when we join the words together we get supurusha and ati purusha as the finally derived compound output. They mean the same thing as sushtu purushaha. But the output does not consist of the word sushtu. Rather it consists of su as well as ati which is not svapada. And therefore this is a nitya samasa. Note that sushtu in this example and dushta in the previous example they are not related to any particular action. Precisely su and ati in this example and dur in the previous example which are pradis are not connected to any specific action denoted by any verbal root so they are not upasarga nor gati. They are pradis and that is why the pradi samasa stated by the sutra kugati pradayaha has taken place. Similarly, we have the meaning little yellow and this meaning is expressed by the words ishat pingalaha. Ishat pingalaha. So, the word a which is a pradi has got the meaning ishat, little. And so now the alaukika vigraha in this case is a plus su plus pingala plus su. Now this becomes a samasa and then it becomes a pratipadika and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and then su and su they get deleted. So we have a plus zero plus pingala plus zero. When we join them together, we get a pingala, meaning little yellow. However, we note that this is a nitya samasa because ishat, which figures in the laukika vigraha, is not part of the finally derived compound output. Now, ishat and pingala, they are also semantically related through the co-referentiality relation. So, A, which is not related to any action and is only a pradi, is compounded over here because of this sutra, Kugati Pradayaha. Similarly, you can have badly done as the meaning to be expressed, which can be expressed by a compound called Dushkrutam. Little tide can be expressed by a compound make, made up by a as a pradi as abadham. Similarly, one can also derive the compound forms in order to express the meaning little warm by adding some more sutras and we can generate the outputs in the form of koshnam, kavoshnam and kadushnam. Koshnam is derived by 63104, Kavoshnam by 63106, and Kadushnam by 63100. This means little warm. So these are the examples of the Pradi Samasa and also the samasa that happens to the word ku. Now the tradition has listed down some more statements where these pradis, they are associated with some other words in peculiar cases. However, 
the pradis are in a way denoting the sense that is expressed by the action words and in this situation the pradi samasa still happens because of this prescription this is what is stated by a number of statements which we shall study now the first such statement is pradayo gatadyarthe prathamaya the words pra etc in the sense of gone are compounded with a semantically related word ending in the prathama case ending so the word pra here means pragata something who has gone ahead so pra stands for one who has gone ahead so if we have the meaning an advanced teacher that means one who has gone ahead in the profession of teaching notably a principal a senior most now we have pragataha acharyaha as the laukika vigraha where acharya stands for a teacher and pragata means an advanced a senior teacher now the laukika vigraha consists of the word pragataha but the alaukika vigraha does not consist the word pragata it consists of only pra and this pra stands for pragata so pra means pragata in this particular context that is what in fact the statement is saying so pra plus su and acharya plus su this is the alaukika vigraha and then the pradi samasa has taken place and gati samasa has taken place and now the pratipadika saudhnya applies and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and deletes both the supratyas so we have pra plus 0 plus acharya plus 0 and then we join them together we have the savarna dirgha sandhi and we get the word pracharya pracharya is a principal in a school or a college the next such statement is atyadaya krantadyarthe dvitiyaya which means that the words ati etc in the sense of traversed kranta are compounded with a semantically related word ending in the dvitiya case ending so here ati stands for atikranta now if we have the meaning one who has traversed the bed atikrantah khatvam this is the laukika vigraha and then we have ati plus su plus khatva plus am this is the alaukika vigraha now this assumes the samasa saudhnya and then there is the pratipadika saudhnya and then the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and buddha supratyas and am pratyas are deleted and so now you have ati plus khatva in the next step now in this case some other operations happen which we have already studied before this is the uttara pada karya where the final element becomes shortened so here we have the word khatva which is a feminine form of khatva khatva plus a is khatva now in this case atikrantah khatvam the word khatva is termed as upasarjana by the sutra eka vibhakti cha apurva nipate 1244 because it is upasarjana the sutra gostriya upasarjana se applies and says that the final vowel of the word go and the word ending in a feminine suffix is shortened when both of them are upasarjana i repeat the final vowel of the word go and the word ending in a feminine suffix like khatva 
is shortened when they are upasarjana and the word khatva is upasarjana because of eka vibhakti cha apurva nipate what this sutra means is that and the one case ending which is constant in the vigraha is also termed as upasarjana if it is not used for determining the initial position in the compound this upasarjana saudhnya has got no correlation with the function of determining the initial position of the compound so now here we have khatva which becomes upasarjana and goes through your upasarjana applies and shortens this long a into a and so we get the finally derived compound output namely atikhatva one who has traversed the bed atikhatva then we also have another statement avadaya krishtadyarthe tritiyaya what this means is that the word our etc in the sense of cried krist are compounded with the semantically related word ending in the tritiya case ending i repeat the words our etc in the sense of cried are compounded with a semantically related word in ending in the tritiya case ending so if we have the meaning having called by the kokila or having cried so we have avakrishtah kokilaya and here avar stands for avakrishta and this is a nitya samasa so avakrishta does not figure in the finally derived compound output so we have avakrishtah kokilaya so avar plus su plus kokila plus ta that will be the alaukika vigraha and then samasa saudhnya takes place and also the pratipadika saudhnya then takes place after which supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and deletes su and ta so we have ava plus 0 plus kokila plus 0 now this kokila becomes upasarjana primarily because of the sutra eka vibhakti cha apurva nipate and then because of the sutra gostri aur upasarjanasya this a at the end of kokila is shortened and so we have our plus 0 plus kokila plus 0 and then we get the finally derived output of the compound our kokila then we have the next statement paryadayo galanadyarthe chaturthya this means the words pari etc in the sense of exhausted are compounded with the semantically related word ending in the chaturthi case ending i repeat the words pari etc in the sense of exhausted are compounded with the semantically related word ending in the chaturthi case ending so for example if you have the meaning exhausted for study pariglanah adhyayanay is the laukika vigraha and then we have the word pari representing pariglana pari meaning pariglana and so we have pari plus su plus adhyayana plus nge and so we have supodhatu pratipadika yo applying over here and so we have pari plus 0 plus adhyayana plus 0 and finally by the application of the sandhi rule we get paryadhyayana as the finally derived output similarly we have niradaya krantadyarthe panchamya another statement what this means is that the words nir etc in the sense of traversed are compounded with a semantically related word ending in the panchami case ending so we have the meaning one who has traversed from varanasi ishkrantah varanasyah now this is a laukika vigraha and nir stands for nishkrant so we have nir plus su plus varanasi plus nasi then samasa saudhnya takes place then pratipadika saudhnya takes place then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies 
and so both the Su and Nasi are deleted. So, we have Nir plus 0 plus Varanasi plus 0 and finally, we get the compound output in the form of Nir Varanasi. Then we have another statement with reference to the word eva, which says Ivena saha samasaha vibhaktya lopaha purvapada prakriti sparatvam cha vaktavyam. What this means is also should be stated the compound with the word eva, which means like, which is an upama vachaka shabda, and the non deletion of the case and retention of the accent on the purvapada is also stated. So, if you have the meaning like the two cloths, the statements are vasasi eva, where vasasi is the prathama vipachana or dvitiyad vipachana, vastre eva is also prathama dvitiyad vipachana. Now, vasasi plus eva, and this is compounded by this statement, but the most important point is that the vibhakti in vasasi and vastre is not deleted. Another important feature is that the accent in Vasasi and Vastre, which is the initial vowel, that is retained as far as the compound is concerned. Similarly, another statement says that Pradi Prasange Karma Pravachaniyanam Pratishedho Vaktavya. Negation should be stated of the compound with words termed karma pravachaniya among the pradis. So, these pradis are termed karma pravachaniya in specific environments. For example, vriksham prati vidyotate vidyut. So, vriksha is the sign where the lightning shone. So, lakshane thambhuta khyana bhagavipsa supratiparyanavaha is the sutra that terms prati as karma pravachaniya and then vriksha gets the dvitiya case because of the sutra prescribing the dvitiya vibhakti karma pravachaniya yukti dvitiya. Now the point is that vriksham and prati are semantically related but they are not to be compounded even though prati is pradi but when prati becomes karma pravachaniya it should not be compounded. Similarly, Sadhur Devadatto Mataram Prati. Here, Mataram and Prati towards the mother. Now, there is semantic relatedness, but the statement is saying that Pradip Prasange Karma Pravachaniyanam Prati Shedha. So, since Prati is Karma Pravachaniya over here, there is negation of its compounding with the other word. To summarize, Pradi Samasa is a peculiar type of compound, part of the Purusha, umbrella, where the action which happens to be the backbone or semantic link is understood to have denoted by the items like pra, etc. The words are not considered to be denotative of any particular meaning. They bring to fore the meaning of the action word associated with them. So, pra stands for pragata, ati for atikranta, and nir for nishkranta. The compound with the word eva is stated for aikasvarya, namely one accent primarily. We continue studying the gati tatpurusha samasa in the coming lectures. These are the texts referred to primarily, and thank you very much.